Hi friends, welcome to the school of rock stars and here is my uh, show Becoming Rock Star with RJ. So today I'm going to interview my Instagram friend. She's an, like a very good friend of mine and her name is Cynthia. So she's an artist, wife and mother of two. Like she is dedicated to her family and her art. She loves to create art every single day. So, and also she loves to read and also spend time with kids. She recently moved to New York to pursue her passion in art and also help her kids to like uh, know their passion to get uh, to get to their dreams. So today I want to welcome Cynthia. You can follow her on Instagram through like uh, her like. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Sorry for the hassle. Oh. Yeah. So, thank you so much for accepting my invitation and I want to know about your story and your passion. So, I have some questions. <laughs> okay. All right. So, that's fine. You yeah. can ask whatever you want. <laughs> and like can you tell more about you? Can you introduce yourself to the audience? Um, well, my name is Cynthia, um, but my nickname is Mimi, so some people call me both. Um, but on Instagram and um, YouTube, I'm One Crafty Beach, and um, I'm 42-year-old mom of three. And oh, I thought two. I have three, um, but my oldest lives far away. She's 23. Okay. And then I have seventeen-year-old who lives with us, and then my ten-year-old. Okay. So, yeah, um, and I'm an artist. So where you live? Oh, I live in Which New York place? City. So you recently moved to New York City. Yeah, last year, last September, we moved. Um, we okay. Came for uh, for dance for my my son. He's a dancer. So okay. To be. We wanted him to chase his dreams, so we moved here for him. Yeah, I got to know that through Tommy this morning. He told me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, uh, uh, how you became an artist? Like, it's your childhood dream. Like, uh, you're doing that from your childhood, or you created in between, like, that passion towards an art. Um, actually, when I was a child, um, I really wasn't very artistic. I was afraid of art. Um, I didn't think that I could draw or paint. And I really liked in class when we were made to do art. I loved it. I had a lot of fun, and it was. I just thought it was it was the best hour of my week or, uh, or my day when we got to do art. Um, but I didn't do it in my free time because I didn't think I was good enough. So I, um, I started doing it more as an adult. Um, okay. To, yeah, because I had kids, so I needed something for myself to do. Okay. And um, that's that's how I found it. Was I, I just wanted something that was my own. Okay. Like, uh, what is your educational background? What you did? Uh, before coming to this art, so what you did for yourself, like? Uh... Um, I have a bachelor's degree in communication. Uh, okay. I went to school to work in marketing and media, um, and then um, when I graduated from college, I I didn't do that. I became actually a teacher's aide. I okay. Put I put out a lot of resumes after college and nobody wanted to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wanted to give me any experience and I lived in a very, very small town. Okay. Um, 
So I put an application to be a substitute teacher, just thinking, why not? And I got yes. the job. Okay. They hired me right away, and I found some something else that I really liked, which was uh, teaching, teaching little kids. Okay. So um, that's what I did that for a few years before I had a son. Okay. So, like, uh, what is the best memory during that teaching days? What is that best memory or best thing? Um, I think. was when i would meet a child who could not even say hello in english and at okay. the end of the school year they would speaking in sentences they would have conversation with me um because i worked with the little kids that didn't speak english they came usually came from mexico but i had a couple of european families um, um and it was it was really the best part was to see you and how okay. quickly how quickly they grew okay like uh, uh what kind of approach or um because uh, in school we'll have different kinds of uh, children they'll have different mindsets how you deal with that like uh, different kinds of uh, children um well each each person has to be um talk to individually every child is their own own child their own person when you have a baby the doctor and the nurses will tell you every child every pregnancy is different every child is different and then they grow up and they go to regular school and then they're told they have to learn the same as everyone else so when okay. they get to school they stop being you know a different person everybody's different with their own personalities and people tend to put them all in the same box so i think it's important when you have a lot of different personalities to take one on one time when you can it's hard in the classroom but that's what that's the what i tried to do cuz i had a small group of kids so i was able to work with them one on one that's my daughter that just joined Hi, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing your video maybe because of network issues. Oh okay. Yeah. And like uh, do you have any regrets that you did bachelor's degree in communication so do you have any regrets like uh, shifting your career? Um I regret the the debt. <laughs> the debt of going to college. But, okay. Um I don't regret going because it was very important. It it was my own personal goal was okay. to go to to have a degree. Because okay. um both of my parents were immigrants and neither of them had a degree. Neither of them went to college. Um so that was very very important to me to get that. So no, I, I don't regret it. Okay, like um do you recommend like uh mm, getting a bachelor's degree or a master's degree is essential for kid or like uh, any student do you think education is a necessary thing um i think education is important and it's necessary but i don't think it has to come from school okay that it, yeah i don't i was just talking to my daughter um about this i shared the grant cardone video that evan put they posted this morning Yes. Uh, with her because um I I don't think I think your education like a college degree should be the last. I think that if you chase your your dreams not a degree that you'll be happier. Unless you want to be a doctor and you need a degree or a specific career that you really really want to do that needs a degree then of course yeah. Okay. So like uh, what your three children are doing like uh, currently what they are doing my oldest is um she had a baby and we don't really talk very much and okay. my my 17 year old she just graduated with me home school and she needs to complete a test at the end of the year um and in december she will have her official degree but she's chasing her dreams right now she's going to be or she wants to be an actress 
So oh, awesome. Yeah, another reason we moved to New York was for to give her opportunities she couldn't find in Florida. Okay. And, uh, my son, he attends a dance school in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and he dances three or four times a week there. They're very, very busy. And I homeschool. I just homeschool my 10-year-old now. My, my okay. older daughter's done. So. Okay. Like, uh, um, like, have you manage your time with kids and your art like uh, simultaneously? Yeah. That's been very hard. I, um, I have to get up early. I, I decided oh. that... <laughs> I decided that it was more important for me to get up and create something than to sleep. But okay. I or you know, I have to remind myself that every morning <laughs> to get up. I like to sleep. But yeah, I have to get up early if I if I want to create. Like uh, what is your morning routine? Like uh, what would be that? Um, well, I try to get up before 7, um, 7.30 at the very, very latest. And then I like to shower and meditate. And um, sometimes I do yoga. I would mm -hmm. like it to be more. I would like it to be every day, but I'm just not able. I'm not physically able to do every day. So. Okay. And then after that, I, um, I have a glass of water and start to create. Okay, like how many hours in a day uh, you spent on your art? Um, not enough. I should be spending eight hours, but I only get probably two hours in the morning. And then okay. if I'm on certain days, I'm, I can get four hours in after or in the, in the afternoon. If my, when my daughter takes my son to dance, um, she does that for me so that I have time to create. So oh, okay. Two, two days a week, she'll help me out, and then I can stay home and make. And while they're while they're gone, that's a good four hours, five hours. So still not enough, but better than nothing. And I'm so lucky to have her to help me. Okay, so you're adjusting your timings with kids. So and yeah, your yeah, yeah. I I have to. Um, but when my son goes to regular school next year. I'll have more time. I'll have because I give him from nine thirty in the morning to two o'clock or three o'clock oh, okay. in the afternoon to homeschool, and then I put everything away, and that's all for him. So, do you have your like office in your like uh, at home? You created um, small um, office. Yeah, we. I took over the living room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> Because it was more important to create and that I have a space than for people to sit and watch TV. Okay. So, like, what kind of art do you create? Uh, when, I, when I have gone through your Instagram, you created some designs with feathers. You did some glass art. You did some painting. You did yeah. many things. Yeah, <laughs> I do a lot of everything. I call myself a mixed media artist. Um, okay. Because I mix, I mix my medias together, but I really, um, I just, doesn't matter what it is. I like to make, uh, use vinyl on glass. I like to make both, t-shirts. Uh, but my favorite thing is paint. I like okay. to paint everywhere. If I have it in my fingernails, on my clothes, then I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that, like uh, painting on glasses. I really love that. Fun, right? Yes. And recently, you uh, you painted uh, this one, right? I really like this one, like a girl. Oh yeah! Oh, thank you. That's yes. a, a stamp, actually. I painted the background, and then the the girl is a stamp. But I did okay. it with a different color ink. Yeah, I did it with white. It was uh, different from what I, I'm used to. I'm trying to okay. expand outside of what I'm, I'm used to. Okay. Like uh, what, what kind of missionary or uh, things you use for this designs or paintings? Like how much it will cost around like a monthly basis? 
Um, well, I've Please. had a lot of my supplies for a long, long time. When I okay. was married to the man I was married to before, I've been married twice, um, I bought a lot of supplies, a lot. Okay. And I never used them because I was afraid. I was afraid to use them. I didn't know how. I, I didn't want to get messy. Um, so I've had a lot of this stuff for a really long time. And in the last year, I just started using it. So okay. it hasn't cost me that much money. Um, but I, I usually, when it's my birthday or Christmas or Mother's Day, I ask for um, gift certificates so I can buy more art supplies. <laughs> because I... <laughs> I, um, you know, with a family, and I don't have a job outside the home, um, I can't spend a lot of money on art supplies. So I have an eBay shop as well that I um, make a little bit of extra money for, okay. to, for crafts. But it can be expensive if you want to buy everything, but you can, you can make art with stuff from the dollar store. Oh, okay. So, like, uh, what advice, like, if somebody wants to, like, uh, uh, start this uh, art uh, business or, like, a passion thing, like, what advice you give to them? Um, just try everything. Just try it all. It doesn't matter uh, um, if you have cheap supplies. Just, just do it. Just create. Whether it's a pencil and paper or pen and paper, just, just do it. Uh, and like your Instagram handle name is One Crafty Beach. Why you named like that? <laughs> um, well, because the beach is because I didn't want to say bitch. Um, oh, okay. It used to say that. <laughs> um, it used to say that because I um, I'm very crafty. So if somebody breaks something, oh, sorry. If somebody breaks something, I can usually fix it. Or if they have a problem, I can figure it out. And if I can't figure it out, I will go and find a book or a video or something to help me figure it out. So that's why I'm the one crafty bitch. Okay. <laughs> so, like, um, uh, I have one other question, like, uh, how many days, like, uh, if you want to create one art, like, uh, how do you start? Like, uh, what, how do you get your ideas? Um, that's, for me, the hardest part. I will my, I will sit here, and sometimes I just stare at the, the desk because I don't know what to do. Um, so I get inspiration sometimes from Instagram. I will hashtag search something. Um, that I'm in the mood for, like the other day I did mermaids, just to give me some inspiration. Um, okay. I won't copy anything from anyone, but it just gives me some inspiration, maybe something I want to draw or paint. But it it is hard. You have to just do it. <laughs> yes, so like just, um, to just do it. Uh, yeah, like. Uh, I once you have an idea, like how many days you take to complete one art, like... Uh, well, it depends because I have to, um, if, they ha if the work has to dry, sometimes I want to wait 24 hours so it's, I know it's dry and I can go over it with other stuff. Sometimes one day. I, I try to do it as fast as possible because once inspiration hits and I get an idea, I, I want it done. I, I want to see it. I want to finish. Okay. Like, uh, uh, you uh, you made stickers for Tommy T. Like, how many days you took for that? Um, that, was, that only took one day. That took, okay. Because he had, he had the image, you know, it was mm. him, his image. So he sent it to me, and I was able to do it in, in a day. But it, it was difficult because I was trying to, to figure out how, how to um, keep the, the logo as one and not break it up, but I, I couldn't okay. do it. So okay. It did take a full day. But, like, I, I'm working on a, on a painting right now that I've been working on for a week. So oh, okay. I'm going to show it when I'm done at the end of the week. When, hopefully when I'm finished, I'll, I will share it with everyone. Okay, nice. Like, uh, um, how people will contact you? Like, uh, they buy your stuff on your website, or uh, you, uh, they contact you through Instagram? Like, yeah, what are the ways? DM. 
DM or um, the, through um, my my Etsy shop. Which is, oh, yes. Um, yeah, Crafty Bee Creates on Etsy. And uh, like, did you go to school for art, or you did you teach yourself? I taught myself. I've never, okay. I've never taken an art class. I've never been taught how to draw, or or paint, or any of that. I just, when I can't figure something out, I go on YouTube, and if I can't find it on YouTube, then I figure out my own way. Okay. Uh, like uh, as an artist you'll be having like a many tough times you'll face many issues or um, you'll go through some hard timing like uh, hard times how you will survive that timing like what is your mental status like uh, during that time oh well i suffer from anxiety a lot um so i have i just create when when i have a lot of problems or i feel bad about myself i make stuff but i don't share it i'll make okay. stuff for myself and sometimes i throw it away later or sometimes i just keep it to remember some whatever i was going through at the time but art art saved my life okay like uh, your your caption is that uh, your passion is to help addicts so that they can come out of that addiction through art right yeah um so I'm like a recovering addict okay so um yeah i I've, i've been clean for 11 years so i and art was one way to help me uh not get me but stay clean it helped me change my mindset and help me realize that i was good enough and that every single thing i made it didn't have to be perfect it just had to come from inside and the more i made art the better i felt about myself and the more my mindset just started to change and that's what i want to help addicts with i want to help them use art and creativity to change their mindset so they can stay clean too like uh, uh when you are during like uh, when when you are in that recovery period like how many years or days uh, you took to recover or like what is your status during that time like what are the thoughts you are going through um well in the beginning it was uh, i couldn't do it i okay. couldn't I, i just couldn't do it it was too hard um but every day um the and the more that i created the more confidence i got I mean, if I got, if I made something and somebody said to me, and the somebody with my husband would say, oh, that's nice. It made me feel better about myself. Um, it just every little thing that I created and made helped me every day. And being at that low state, it, it was very hard to pull myself. It took me a very long time to believe in myself. okay like uh, what do you do or like uh, do you read books or do you watch positive videos like how how you motivate yourself oh well i watch evan carmichael i yes. watch a lot of his content and um and i like i watch a lot of videos definitely um i spend my day with podcasts okay videos. so when i'm with my son we don't we don't do anything except school but when we our time is up um that's when the headphones go on and a, well, there's always a podcast or a an interview or top 10 rules or or something to watch i try to spend my entire day surrounded by successful people and if i'm not hearing their messages in my ear um i will or the audiobook cuz i i use the audiobook then i'll go on instagram and spend time with people like me that are trying to better themselves and become successful like you like Tommy you know and that's that's the other thing that i do and and it helps to motivate me when i see you guys especially when you post the picture of your watch and the time it helps motivate me too i love that <laughs> 
I love yes. that you do that because I'll wake up every morning and I look at the clock and I'm like, okay, now, you know, and, and it helps me, even though my watch is different than yours. Um, I just, I look at it in the morning and I think of you and I, and I know she's going to be up soon. I better get up too. <laughs> like I usually get up like, uh, in between 5.30 to 6 every morning. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's my goal. Yeah. My goal is to get up um, at 6. I used to get up at 5 um, when we were living in Florida. But my son's dance, um, his dance class ends at 7. And if it takes an hour, a little more than an hour by train to get home. So by the time we home, it's 8.30 and cooking and da da So I go to bed a tiny bit later than I would like to. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's my goal is 5 o'clock. That's also yeah. good for you for 5, 30, <laughs> or 6. That's wonderful. Like, if I do something or, like, an, I do nothing, I'll wake up at that time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, there's days that I say, okay, I'm going to sleep a little later, and I'll wake up early those days. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, yeah. recently so, I started doing the jogging as well. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yes. Uh, I used to walk the dog in the morning, um, but I don't know. I just, when it got cold, I had a very, that was my excuse. When it, it got too cold, I, wa I would like to, I would like to do some sort of um, morning routine where I'm, where I'm exercising too, but then I think about, do I want to exercise or do I want to create quietly with nobody bothering me? So I, I need to, I do the exercise later, the yoga with my son. Okay. <laughs> That's what I, I push. I push the yoga, if anything. So like, uh, do you procrastinate? Like, uh, do you postpone the things? I, I try not to. I try mm. not to. Um, I'm really bad about it, but I watched a video with Mel Robbins where she said that that's a habit because you're stressed and so now when I want to put things off I remind I, I ask myself what am I stressed about what's going on why am I putting this off and then I try to do it right away I don't always I'm not, I'm not I don't always but I, I do try to take that thing that I'm avoiding and just do it okay like uh, mm. How does an artist build like a successful business like around the art? Like, what are the ideas or thoughts you sh you would share with the uh, the next generation? Um, well, that's what I'm still working on. <laughs> I uh, haven't figured it out yet, but um, I really believe that if I keep going forward and making art, and that I keep going forward trying to help addicts, that it, it'll happen that um, I don't know how that it's going to happen, but I know it will. Okay. So I Let's... just have to keep creating and keep pushing forward. And doing collaborations also is a big thing. Working with people who are already established artists and who already are known, that, that's something else. Uh, like, uh, have you done that? Like, uh, have you collaborated with any other artists? in your area or community? Not yet. No, um, right now my my next step is I'm going to reach out to, um, there's some sober houses here in Brooklyn, and I want to teach a class for free to, to some addicts that are already going through recovery. That's my next step. Um, awesome. You know, <laughs> yeah. Let's like, money. <laughs> <laughs> but for free, you can do that. Like, uh, you can record that and... Uh, you can post it on your YouTube channel so that somebody can like. Uh, um, do you like? Uh, do you send requests on Instagrams like uh, I want to collaborate with you or I want to talk yet. with you? Not yet, because I want to build up my portfolio. I think that there's some work I still need to do as an artist to learn. I'm still um, like I like since I've not gone to um, art school. I don't know how to draw people or um, or just the human form, so I've been working a lot 
a lot okay. on that. Okay. Yeah. You're working on like a creating a human faces. I'm learning how to how, how to draw people. I draw I draw a lot of cartoon looking um people hmm. and I want to learn how to draw m- more professionally how to really do it the real way and not just my way. Oh, okay. And, yeah, so that's why I haven't reached out yet because I'm still in the learning process. Um and I draw every day to get better awesome. every single day. Awesome. Like uh, what do you think about um uh before starting an art like uh, what do you think mm, before uh, what do you think in yourself like uh, before starting uh, some new art oh um well i of course i'm always worried and i can't do this <laughs> it's too <laughs> hard um because my whole life i told myself i can't draw oh I okay can't draw, i can't draw and then i started to draw and i found out that that's not true i'm actually i'm okay i'm not too bad i'm not great but i'm not too bad and i just need to practice uh, so i always remind myself like yesterday i don't know if you saw i posted the the cube that i drew with my son well i was teaching him how to draw cubes and cones and um spheres And yeah like I, I saw your story yeah <laughs> I don't know how to do that I we learned together we turned on a YouTube video and we started practicing and he got it you know he got it pretty quickly um so he drew a whole bunch of them and, and then he left and I stayed and drew at least 50 more because I wasn't happy with with it okay. and then I had to remind myself hey you just started doing this you didn't know how to do this an hour ago so That's okay. what I try to remind myself. It's okay to be bad in the beginning. Um like uh, uh once in a while you'll get many ideas at a time. So how do you manage that like uh, do you <laughs> I do. I'm always having lots of ideas all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I write them down. I write okay. them down. Yeah, I have to, I have a notebook. So oh here. So you'll do one by ideas. one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I and I have it organized like by holiday um or birthday or you know Christmas or each holiday I have it separated. So I know um so I have like I have a bunch of stuff that I'm working on or I'm about to start working on in the next week but and they're all came from here last year like so I try to write it down and do it one by one just because I want to get it all done. I want to make it okay. <laughs> I want to make everything. And and also like uh, you gift your kids like uh, your art or uh, do you make <laughs> Yeah. Um I like they they always ask for a t-shirt every Christmas. Um okay. so I usually make a t-shirt um, on their birthdays or Christmas. They like they love to give my gifts. um my my art as gifts to other people um, okay awesome <laughs> but they don't really they don't really ask for their own stuff unless my son made me wear buy or make a shirt that said i love myself oh he wanted everyone to know he loves himself so i want okay. to sure to make that shirt yeah and like uh, do you paint on shirt or uh, like what how do you do that like uh... i do both I I have stencils that you lay down on the shirt and then um I paint each letter um but okay. I find that that's really it takes a lot of time and it it's easy to mess it up but I have a cutting machine and I mm. like the stickers I made for Tommy but it's not mm. sticky so I put it on the shirt and I have a a heat press and okay. um like a professional heat press I I bought it so I can make um like real shirts and not just they look nice sir okay like uh, uh, i i do want a shirt because i don't know that uh, you you print on shirts oh <laughs> like, yeah yeah i do like if you look in my in my um my my page there's a little um black shirt that says i don't know if you know harry potter 
Do you know yes. The Harry Potter? Yeah, yes. it has the Slytherin logo on it. I made that. Yes. Okay. That. I caught, I bought the the logo. I bought it off somebody online so that I had permission to to use it. And then okay. I um I made it. Yeah, I printed it and I heat pressed it. If you have no. your logo, if you have your files, if you send it to me, I can make stuff for you. Okay, so you'll uh, print it on white or black, any color, or do you have yeah, any, any specific? Okay. Yeah, any color. I can do layer. It depends on the the logo. I can do one layer, two, um, not more than that. Okay. like uh, how much will you charge for the like what range it's dip- oh i don't know it depends just for the shirt and for the, the whatever i i use material i, use. I don't know oh, okay like 25 bucks they're not that expensive okay like uh, how do you continue to innovate like uh, you do this art like um, so many times right how do you continue to innovate yourself like uh, how do you motivate yourself um well i like to watch a lot of other artists on youtube i will put okay. um an artist that's live or an old live and i will play it while i'm creating and they push me to to learn new things i'll i'll see something someone did and they'll do it a different way that i've never seen and I'm like, oh i'll try that let me try that and and Okay. So I'm I'm hired by other artists and they help motivate me to keep going for sure cuz I want to be better than them. <laughs> so uh you're doing uh like uh, you can call yourself as an entrepreneur so you are inspiration to many people like uh, addict who are recovering from addictions you are inspiration to them and also you are inspiration to many women like who wants to yeah who wants to do more stuff by themselves like you are doing a great thing thank you that's yeah nice do yeah do you feel that freedom or uh, um yeah i do i do i'm really lucky that i have a husband that's supportive and my kids too if i'm making stuff they know that that's that's my time um i feel like um like, yeah i mean I, i'm very lucky and, and i have a freedom that other people don't have i mean i have to give up a lot for don't okay. get me wrong we do i give up a lot because i with my degree i could have a full time job and i could be bringing in a lot of money and, and that would be less pressure but um i'm given the chance to to chase my dream and i want to share it with everyone else too like uh Uh, you have all family support right from everyone your kids your husband your parents um not so, my parents oh, okay now my parents um my parents my mother never really asked me what my dream was okay. to do really um I, because she was an immigrant she just expected that i would um go to school and work and that would be it. So for her if I share my art with her she says, "Oh, that's nice." But it should be a, a sh- in her mind it should be a hobby. It shouldn't be something I try to make money with. It should oh. I should focus on the family, the home, my husband, my children. I don't agree, but I Yeah, that same her. thing. Yeah, the the same thing happens like uh, with all the girls in India. <laughs> Be- yeah because like uh, the uh, parents feel like job is a secure thing you have to have one job yeah. <laughs> for living yeah other than that n- nothing is like uh, the great thing yeah. yeah yeah if it's not making money um i have been torn because i am very good at editing and writing and i've been pushed to do those things those things don't bring me the joy and passion the way that painting and art and creating do. I could do that stuff to make money. I could write or I could edit, I could research, but 
I would be back to where I was years ago and doing something I was unhappy with and not no time for my art. Okay. Like if somebody wants to convince their parents like uh, on what they are doing like what suggestion you will give to them Oh wow I would say just be honest with them just sit them down okay. and be honest I wish I had done that I wish I had just said to my mom this is what I want to do That's Yeah because yeah because the same thing is like uh, running in my mind like my parents don't know that I'm like uh, doing this stuff on instagram or youtube right. they think that uh, yeah i'm doing the like i'm doing a day job as a web developer but uh, like my interest is like i'm working on inter- like uh, my hobbies or my i'm doing side hustle like every single day right so like uh, uh, what t- what tips you give to me like um, to convince them or uh, to tell them i would just be honest just sit them down and say look this is what i'm doing this is what's happening um i love you and i want you to support me and you have to be prepared for them to be angry and that's okay okay so okay because if my kids came to me and said listen i know we moved to new york but i don't want to dance i don't want to be an actress i would be angry at first but i love my kids so i want them to be happy and i know your parents love you too but you have to show them you have to show them that you can do it that's it be honest with them and show them and that's why like yes that's why like i'm doing stuff now so that i can show them my work so good good for you inst- yeah instead of like convincing them by like a true words I uh I have some work that I can show them. Good for you. Yeah. Because you're if you're you tell them the truth and say, "See, this is what I've done. I I'm not just dreaming. I'm not just sitting in my room dreaming and what I might be, but you're showing them. You have something." Yeah, Great. because yeah, the problem is that in India my, like a parents like a most of the parents like uh, have some negative uh, thinking on uh, uh this like a social media platforms the thing that they are not good for us like uh, right. it yeah so that's the problem mostly in india like uh, right i think that's probably not just there it's in other parts of the world as well my parents think social media is for horrible why would you yes. share your private self with them why would you tell your business The next thing you do you're going to show them your underpants. I, I mean it's it's ridiculous. But but they come from another time where this didn't exist. They come from from a time where this this is to them ridiculous. Even, you know, driving an Uber to my parents is ridiculous. My Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean to them that's just why would you do that when you can have a, a regular job, job, steady income, you know, when um that you know what your check is going to be every week why would you go to uber and and risk not having a steady steady paycheck so i understand um i i try to remember that they come from a different generation that they oh, okay <laughs> just just be patient with them because they don't understand like at what age you started like a uh this passion of drawing art or creating art at what age um i was almost 30 it was it was like 28 29 when i started and then i lost interest for a few years because i was using i was doing drugs and and that was more important back then so i oh, took, okay. i took a few years off and then again when i turned 37 Um so a few years ago I felt very empty. I felt okay. very alone and um I remembered I had all the supplies. I remembered I had and my mother had them for me. So when I um when I had the opportunity every time I would go to America because I was living in Ireland, I would take some with me just a little bit at a time and that that's really what what brought me back was just a little bit of art at a time. So, yeah, 37. That's when I found it again. Okay, that's awesome. 
and like uh, uh, when you are taking drugs or you are in that period of time like um, what's your parents reaction how they reacted to you um well their reaction was to turn their back on me mm. and um but that was okay because they were taking care of my kids i was unable to take care of them so okay. my parents my parents were doing what i couldn't at the time mm. um so i i was very i feel very blessed that my my kids had my parents and my son wasn't born back then so my my two girls they lived with my mom and dad but they um they were very supportive once we we they saw that we really meant it um uh, once they saw that i was doing the work to stay clean and i was um i was doing everything that i said i was doing so i i had to show show them you know like you said i had to show them that i was doing the work and and getting clean before they trusted me with my kids again so it was very hard like uh, what made you uh like uh, to take that drugs or like you know that it is not good for you but right. what made you like it's like uh, at that time in the surroundings made you that or your friends no no i think that i was so unhappy with my life i was oh, okay. uh, i was um teaching and but that's all i had i would come home from from work and i I mean I was with my kids but I just I was with them but I didn't feel like I was good enough to be taking care of them so um that's that I would send them to my mother's and to make myself feel better because I had nothing else is when I decided I would use drugs so oh, okay it, it was to make myself it, it, it was replacing something that I didn't know was missing okay and i felt that that thing that was missing was i think our it was creating like uh, um be- because like uh, you can do many things to recover from that uh, that feeling or drugs but why you choose the particularly art um because at first i would take my pain and draw my pain Okay. When I was young, I would write. I wrote a lot of dark art, like a lot of dark things when I was young. And then when I got older, I found that that was a good way to get it out. So instead of writing it down because I didn't want people to read, I would create something. And it was a way to take my pain, see my pain and say, "Fuck you, my pain." <laughs> and and I would get rid of whatever it was. I would rip it up. or throw it away or burn it or whatever it was I would as a way to try to let let it go and that really 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 helped um I don't think that I really like said oh I'll I'll pick art it started because I didn't want to write things down so okay. thought, well instead of writing it down I'll draw it I don't know that like uh, you have gone through this much I'm so proud of you Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like what is that hardest part during that period? Like what is the like, uh, most hardest part uh to get through or uh, I'm not sure how to ask it. The hardest part I think was being away from my kids and okay. not feeling good enough. Like I didn't think I was good enough to get better. it took a lot of oh. time to feel good enough. I mean, still I I I still struggle with that all the time. That's why I joined the the Evan Carmichael's the 254 confidence to try to give myself more confidence and and believe more in myself. Okay, like um what is your one word? You follow Evan like a <laughs> each and every day you for like uh, you watch his content every single day so what is your one word my one word is create create okay yeah. <laughs> like uh have you read his book one word um actually i haven't i feel horrible i haven't um 
I just haven't had the extra money to, to buy it. And I follow all his content. And I wish I had read it before I chose my other one word because I just changed it recently mm. because I it was focused because I knew that if whatever I focused on, I would get. But it didn't fit right. It didn't feel right. And the other day I thought, well, I always want people to create and I'm all about creation. And I watched Lily's TED Talk. Yes. So I did the the steps, the, the, the things she tells you to do in it. And my word was create. And I thought, well, that's my word. Why did I pick focus? So, okay. yeah, so I just changed it recently. So are you planning for Evan's workshop in May? Yes, I really want to go. Tommy and I spoke about it today, about the three of us should do a mastermind together and how we could gain that money. Yes. <laughs> so we can all go, yeah, I think that would be amazing. That way we all push each other um, to really make it happen, you know, to what we can do every week to, to take steps forward and make it happen. I think that's oh. a brilliant idea. So if, if you're if you're down, I am too. Yes. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. That would be so much fun. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Because I know that he's helped me, you know, Evan's helped me, and I think that that's my next step is that I need to, to meet him and push myself and to and to go forward. I think that's going to help my myself, my brand, and everything I want to do, my mission. I think that's really going to help push me forward. Yeah, I spoke to Tommy this morning. We also discussed the same thing about uh, mastermind group. He told like uh, his idea, his business idea to me. So I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. Yes. It's like, what are you most proud of yourself? Like uh, that most people don't know about you. Um, there's a few things. Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is my graduating from college because okay. it took me seven years. I yeah, I saw your picture. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. It took me seven years, two babies, a marriage, and a divorce. And okay. I still did it because that for me to be the first person in my family, and my family, I mean my, my mother and my father and me because it's just the three of us. Um, my aunts and uncles, they've all graduated. They all have degrees. But out of our little family, I was the first. And I made my parents really proud. So for me, that's that's something that I'm really, really proud of. But something else that I'm really proud of are my kids. I, okay. see, I see that everything I'm learning from Evan and Tom Bilyeu, I push on them and I'm always telling them. And, and when I see them do things... But, you know, I see them go outside their comfort zone. I just, there's nothing that makes me feel more proud than to see all those good things coming out of them. Awesome. Like, who are the three people that uh, gives you, like, a more inspiration in your life? Uh, well, definitely my kids. They, they inspire me to be better every day. Um, okay. And Evan, definitely. He's always other, yeah, other than family? Other than family? Definitely Evan, um, Tom Bilyeu, and his wife, Lisa Bilyeu. The three okay. of them, they really, they, I, I see and follow other people, but the three of them are the ones that I am with every single day. Okay. Like, uh, do you have a tattoo? I have several. <laughs> awesome. I, have, I have many. I have many. I have I have a bunch on my arm and the rest of them I can't really show you. But oh, okay, one, okay. Like this if my you favorite. It says love. Okay. It's hard to see, but it's my very favorite. It says love. So, like, uh, if you wanna get one tattoo on your forehead, what is that one word or one symbol? A heart. Heart. Awesome. I put a heart there because I want everyone to to feel love and to love. I want everyone to feel that when they when they are around me. Okay, like uh, what are you uh, what are you grateful for life in the like a recent past? 
what are you most grateful for um i'm most grateful for being so annoyed with my family for the, that they made me move here to new york city okay so like uh, i'll tell you some names like uh, um if you wake up uh, like that person the next morning what will you do okay yeah and then carmichael oh i would <laughs> probably make a video um of him dancing cuz awesome him dance we never see him dance he owns a dance studio we never get to see him dance Oh uh, okay I did watch like I saw him dancing like couple of times Have you uh, maybe I yeah. didn't notice I haven't seen it I haven't seen Okay it. I think it's funny though because he owns a dance studio or he, I don't know if he owns the whole thing but he's has this th- dance studio and I've never seen him like not really maybe a little oh, okay. you know but not really any any actual move so I would probably dance <laughs> Okay uh Lily ma Oh Lily um I would get on the computer and find out what coach's corner is because I hear her talk about it all the time and I don't know what it is Okay and I would oh I would also um go on Instagram and say hi to everybody just because awesome. I look like her she's so cute <laughs> and like uh, uh if you wake up as tom bill you i would probably um do interviews <laughs> i would probably do a lot of interviews in one day and see if how i can in- become as good as he is yeah yes and what about his wife lisa <laughs> oh wow i would work out i would okay. work out okay <laughs> She looks great. She looks really great. I love her arms. I well, no, I take that back. I would probably stare at myself, my arms in the, in the mirror for all day because she has the most beautiful arms. Okay. And um, if you wake up as Gary V? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really follow him that much anymore. I would probably calm down a little. Okay. <laughs> like uh um a Tony Robbins I think I saw your post uh, on Instagram about to- Tony Robbins. Yeah, I saw him speak in Atlanta. I would probably um do the the pool. He does the um, a cold dive every morning in the water okay. and I've always okay. wanted to do that. It looks like fun. Sinia the cold. live gonna be Thank you so much guys. I don't know that Cynthia has gone through all this like uh, all these issues and she has like very great story. So I'm really inspired that I am so grateful today I did an interview with her. So thankful to universe for like uh, n- like uh, I have known that like I'm so grateful that I have known through Instagram. I am so thankful to Evan Carmichael who made this happen. Thank you so much. Hi Cynthia. Thank you so much. Hi. Here we are. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much. I am so grateful to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. that was fun yeah yours like uh, i don't know about your story i only see like uh, your stuff like your art on your website and your like uh, on your instagram stories and on your instagram feed but i don't know the story behind you but today oh. <laughs> yes <laughs> i know i can feel that pain <laughs> you have to create more and more you have to inspire like Yeah, uh, like you can start doing like a free sessions in your community so that you can inspire more kids to do more like art things. I definitely want to. I'm working towards that for sure. I just want to be a little bit better before I feel like I can teach other people. Okay. 
but you are good enough to teach them <laughs> like uh, what is it, what is like uh, i i have one more question to you <laughs> like after many years if this is the last day to you like uh, if i have given you one paper to write three words or three sentences what you will write on that paper like if you want to give like if you want to share that three things to your next generation or your kids what are the three things it would be create every day okay three <laughs> yeah because i think that doesn't matter if it's art it doesn't matter if it's a video it doesn't matter whatever you're creating whatever you're making you need to do it i mean it doesn't matter whether you're creating a car because you're fixing it you're a mechanic and that's what you do it doesn't matter to me i think that it's the most important that you just make things you create it and you put it out daily whether you share with people or not it doesn't matter it's for you inside okay like why don't you do live sessions like a frequently <laughs> you can do that <laughs> you should do that i'm so nervous for live i'm so nervous <laughs> I am I I want the bug to to do a live while I was painting while I, when I feel a little more uh comfortable I think in front of the camera I will do it But you are very good in front of the camera <laughs> you should do that <laughs> Yeah you should go live when you are doing stuff or creating something you should so the audience like a 5 5 to 10 minutes that's enough or 10 to 15 minutes like because Oh, yeah, idea, yes. For a few minutes at least. Yes. Yeah. Oh, maybe I will. Oops, it fell. Sorry. Because <laughs> like uh, th- uh that video can inspire one one person, at least one person, and also like you feel comfortable by doing that every single day. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's a good idea. Maybe I will I will definitely think about it. Thank you so much. Yes. So, uh do you want to tell audience about like where can I find them? Uh, sorry, where can I find you? Um on Instagram, I'm uh, one crafty each and YouTube also one crafty. Each. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh wait, no. YouTube is one crafty. Each. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so and how like uh, how i did your interview like uh, <laughs> you did a great job yeah uh, like yes yeah you did a great job really with your and, and also thank you so much and also like uh, do you have any feedback for me so that i can improve for the next interview um i think the only thing that i would suggest is maybe without the light behind mm-hmm. you um but i think you did a really good job and you had your questions written down and you knew stuff about me my art so good and there's not all, it's there's not a lot to find out about me. okay so that was good for you though no you did a really good job and really really um really happy thank you so much for asking me. thank you so much india i'm so grateful i'm so grateful to evan carmichael because through evan i know you Yeah, yes. me too. And it was my um it was my greatest um what is what I'm looking for. I am I really really was looking for a tribe, some people who would understand me, who I could talk to, who if I showed them a video or I wouldn't even have to show you a video. You already <laughs> Yes. You know. <laughs> It's nice that I can mention things to you guys and you guys are supportive and i feel like you all have my back and to me i'm forever grateful to evan for that yes thank you so much